So I am Miss Erin from the Cedar Rapids Museum of Art. I uh, am the education director, so I do fun things like the classes and the tours and all the fun stuff. So some of you I've met before. Um, if you have the chance, I always recommend coming to visit the Museum of Art because we have a lot of cool stuff on display and it changes a lot of the time. So even if you've been there before, you'll get to see new stuff each time you come and visit us. And right now we have so much Grant Wood artwork. If you have ever seen American Gothic, it's the painting, it's really, really famous. It's actually the second most famous painting in the whole world. There's a house in the background and then a farmer and a lady standing in the foreground and he's holding a pitchfork and he's wearing bib overalls and she's wearing an apron and has a little pin and she looks kind of, mm, and he looks, mm, they look kind of grouchy. That's American Gothic. And the guy who painted that painting is Grant Wood. He's from Iowa and we have so much Grant Wood artwork at the museum. And we always have a little bit on display so you can see Grant Wood whenever you come visit. But right now, so much more, so much more. So if you come visit us right now, you'll get to see a ton of Grant Wood's artwork, not just paintings. He did sculptures, he did prints, he did drawings. We even have some of his crayon drawings from when he was a student. So he started early, just like you guys are. And I thought for our class today, we could do something kind of inspired by what Grant liked to paint a lot, which was landscapes. Does anybody know what a landscape is? You do? Uh, yeah. Miss Milena, what is it? It's a place, it's a place somewhere. Like it a is place. a place. It's a place that, <laughs> that, and usually sometimes artists use those for backgrounds in their paintings. Oh, that's a good, yes, that's a good point. They do use a lot of landscapes as backgrounds for their paintings. Sometimes that's all that's in the painting is the landscape. Uh -huh. So if you think about the word landscape, what does it sound in, what does it sound like is the biggest part of a landscape? The land. The land. Exactly. So Grant Wood being from Iowa had a lot of yes. Iowa land to look at a lot yes. of the time. So he painted a lot of yes. Iowa landscapes. Okay. So not surprisingly, there are farms and houses and barns and sometimes people. So I, want I found a book today called Busy Farm. This is a counting book. So it's not really a story exactly, but uh, you're gonna see this is kind of a special book. Has anybody ever read a cool pop-up book before? Yeah, I see some thumbs up. Yeah, so this is a pop-up book, but it's not your everyday pop-up book because you read it like this. So it says, how many farmers are driving the tractor? Can you see how many farmers are driving the tractor? Malena, I see you holding up a finger. How many? One farmer. Sorry, Mommy, one. but I'm moved. Yep. No, that's okay. Yes. One farmer, exactly. So yes. how many dogs are riding on the trailer? Two. And if Two. you haven't figured this out yet, since it's a counting book, it starts off with one Two. farmer, two dogs. What's oh. going to come next? It will come after two. One, two, one. three mice. Three. Oh, I you saw, know what? I, 
I love that you're looking for the mice because the mice are going to come back in every picture. <gasps> oh, mm. is it a, a finding book? It can we, have, be. we have Richard Scary's books and they have <gasps> lots of. <gasps> oh, yes, Richard here. Scary has fun books. We so this one. one, how yeah. many cats? Yeah. Three, Three cats. cats. Do you see them? Mm -hmm. Over on, ooh, let's see if I can use my fingers in a weird way. One, two, three. How many horses? Two horses. One, two, three, four. One, two, oh, three, three, four. That's right. Welcome, Ch is it Chaitra? Yes, ma'am, Chaitra. Chaitra, welcome. Thanks for joining us. We're in the middle of a counting book, and I apologize that I had the password messed up. So that's probably why you had some tricky difficulty. Okay, no problem. So we're in the middle of a counting book. We've done one farmer, two, oop, there they are, two dogs, three cats, four horses. What number comes next? One, two, three, four. Huh? One, two, three, four. I'm looking for the mice. Three, four. Five. Five. Five cows. Can you count the cows? Yes. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. There's one hiding. One hiding. I see it. It's hiding yes. behind that cow. Yes, the big they're cow. sneaky cows. Look at those sneaky cows cow. hiding. And when we have <laughs> how many pigs? <laughs> um, one, two, three, That's four. There should be That's six pigs. That's so can you find That's six pigs? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six pigs. They're all blended together. They are. They're like oh, camouflaged. Oh, Can you see any mice in this one, Milena? Ooh, I'm looking, 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 looking. I think I know where the mice might be hiding. <laughs> I Look think on they top might of be hiding. Of the with, yeah, I think the the mice might be hiding with the pigs. Right there. Yeah, I see it. Tricky little mouse. Now we've done one, two, three, four, five, six. Then come seven. Seven, seven, seven sheep. sheep. Can you count the sheep? One, one two, 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 three, four, five, six, seven, six. Seven sheep. Seven. And how many rabbits? One, two, three. Oh, I see the mouse. He's hiding you see the seat. mouse? Uh -huh. There should be eight rabbits. Did you get all eight? Yes. Okay. And there's a mouse hiding with the rabbits, but there's also a mouse with the sheep. Yep, I see the, the mouse. It's with the very farthest, the far left sheep. Yes. Now... We've done up to eight. What number comes next? Nine. Nine? What, what do you think we're going to have nine of? Nine. We've horses. had a lot of animals so far, but what are we missing? Ducks. Ooh. Llamas. Maybe ducks. Llamas. I know the library said, but I hope we have llamas. Nine chickens. Nine chickens. And... 10 chicks. So we're going to count the grown up chickens first. Can you count all nine chickens? Hey, I think I see a mouse with the chickens. Yes, there's a mouse with the chickens. I see him. One, two, One, two three, four, four, five, six, six seven, seven, eight, 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 nine. And the little mousy. Oh, and the chicks. baby chicks. Are you ready to count to ten? One. Let's see. Four, two, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten, ten. I see the mouse. And the little mouse. 
<laughs> and it looks like this one is talking. I don't know what he's saying. Talking. So our cool pop-up book has layers in front of each other. That is a cool little trick that artists use that they give you a little bit more excitement in a picture. Rather than just having one thing to look at, you have lots of things to look at. So there's a word for that. Let's look at this picture, for example, on the cover of the book. So there's something called background. And Melina even said that word earlier today. What is in the background of this picture? This thing, no, in that the, picture. The in the landscape. landscape. There is a landscape here. What is in the landscape that's in the background? So the background is in the back. Look. What's in the back? Hill. Hill. Farmhouse, it looks like. Yep, what? there's a house and a barn. And barn? And maybe that's the and house cow. and that's the barn. I don't know. And then there's another word for what goes in the front or what I'm goes before go everything else. It's called the foreground. So we have a background and a foreground. What's in the foreground or the front? Well, all the animals. We have, we have all the animals. And Which animals and the are farmer. in the front front? The way, way in the front front of everything else. What's in the, the foreground? Chicken. The chickens what? are, and at least one of the cats. Cats. And a little bush, a little oh, shrubbery. Boy. So those are in the foreground. But what about all this stuff that's in the middle? Cold. So if that's the background, and that's the foreground, call the part that's in the middle. Hmm. Middle ground? <gasps> Who said that? Malena, what did you say? Middle ground. It is middle called ground. the middle ground. Exactly. It's not that tricky, is it? So we have a background. <laughs> Full ground because it's before and middle ground. And so the middle ground in this picture has actually lots of layers too. Now, one of the, the things of it should be called the front ground. <laughs> well, I didn't make up the name, so I'm sorry <laughs> yeah. I can't change it. I wish I could because I think right. you're right. But at least foreground is not that hard to remember. Now, I have a couple of Grant Wood pictures to show you where he does something kind of similar. He uses foreground and middle ground and background to give you some exciting stuff. But he also does a little trick. Grant Wood Landscapes, it says, look for the zigzag. Oh, that's the little trick. That's the, the trick. Grant really loved to use this little trick to get you to use your eyeballs to look at all the parts of a painting, especially in a landscape. And he's not the only artist who did it, but he's my favorite one to look at because they are super exaggerated, big zigzags. Do you see a zigzag in this picture? Yeah. This is called Young Corn, and it is part of our exhibition at the at the museum, but it actually belongs to the Cedar Rapids School District. Now, if you're still having a, a little trouble figuring out where the zigzag is that I'm showing you, take a look at this. So we have these guys these lines in the front, the foreground, okay. that are, it looks like crops. I think it's corn plants or maybe it's beans. It's hard to tell because it's spring, so it's early. But he put all of those crops in lines that kind of point you mm -hmm. right toward the middle of the foreground. Do you see where it points to the center? Yes. And then when your eyes finally make it to the center, then he takes your eyes through the crops in the middle ground, around the trees, and around a fence line, all the way up 
to the back in the background. I see the, I see the. You see the zigzag, zigzag. now? Yeah, it yeah. zigzags back and forth quite a few times, actually. And mm -hmm. there's also another trick about this painting, you guys. Wherever the zigzag points, it sometimes points at a special feature. So, so one of the secrets about Grant Wood that a lot of people don't know is that he liked to hide secret things in his paintings. And a lot of the time, like this one, he would hide windmills. Do you see any hidden windmills? Hmm. How about if I give you a little close up? So here's the crops in the foreground. And I really do think it's corn because it's called young corn. But once you get around the crops in the foreground and your eyes go to the middle ground and it zigs off to the side, what is that? A windmill. Oh, peeking out from behind some trees. Look at that tiny, tiny windmill. It's only a half a windmill, too, because it's peeking out from around the corner. What about if we keep going around the circle, or excuse me, around the zigzag? What might be hidden at the end of the zigzag? <gasps> what is that, you guys? Another window. It is another window. It's a little window. It's teeny tiny. But it's hidden. But it's small. It is very small. And it's very light colored, so it almost blends in with the sky. It's really hard to see, but he used that little secret to show you the zigzags. He uses the zigzags to make sure that your eyes eventually land on those windmills. No, 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 no. So this is not the only painting he uses, his zigzag trick, like I was just showing you a second ago. This is one that's called Spring in the Country. Do you see any zigzag in here? Yes. Do you? Yeah. Yes. I yes. see. Actually, there's quite a few zigzags, isn't aren't there? What about this one? It's called over mantle decoration because it was decorating above a mantelpiece in a fireplace. Do you see any zigzags here? Yeah. yeah. This one's a little trickier, but they are there. Mm -hmm. Here. Can you see my mouse moving around in the grass? Can you? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So if we start with these flowers down here in the foreground, then there's this diagonal line along the road that kind of zigs up here. And where does it stop? The man on a horse and his family. And then if we follow this path up to the house, it zigs back the other direction. And there's a house up here with lots of cool stuff to look at. There's also a zig this way again with the tree line. And even back here, the line of the, the trees gives you a little zag back toward this side of the painting. Now, there is not a hidden windmill in this one because this is not a farm. This is in town, but do you see any other hidden elements that we might have missed if we hadn't zigzagged back and forth? A gate. I see a gate ah. at the very back behind the weeping willow. Oh, very nice. There is a tiny little arched gate back here in the fence. Yep, I saw that one. Mm -hmm. There's also a little fountain back here right next to it. So we get to see lots of cool stuff in the, the backyard. That oh, we I see the fountain. Do you see anything else kind of cool, but sort of hidden that we might have missed before? The chimney. Oh. Oh. Nice. Here's something kind of funny. Like cat on the, 
Yes, thank you, Addie. I was just gonna say that. There's a there's a little critter. I think this one's a bird, and then this is a cat on the front steps. Those two little critters are sort of out in the middle of nowhere, except the shadows from the trees are pointing right at them. He's very tricky, isn't he? How about this one? Do you see a zigzag in here? Yeah. Does anybody recognize um, this house, by the way? Oops. This house back here in the background. Does that look familiar? Gothic house. Oh, it man. is the American Gothic house. Good golly, Milena. Good eye. That is the house in like the background window. of that famous painting I was talking about with the That's farmer the and the lady. So he's using, this isn't even a painting. This is a lithograph or print, but he uses that same zigzag. So we zig up here, we zag this way. And even the line of the house kind of helps us with that zigzag. Uh -huh. And That's it, cool. And I see something. It's a different. It's a different view of the painting. That is very correct. It is a different angle of the house. So the house isn't in the uh, foreground. The, the house is in the background. But what's in the foreground this time? Instead of a farmer and a lady, a barn and crop. Yeah. So in this one, it makes us think that the most important part of the story no. is not the people who live here, but what they're doing, what they're growing. How about this Grant Wood piece? Do you see a zigzag in here? Yes. 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 Pointing to the very tiny farmhouse. Yes. And there's, it's very hard to see because I couldn't get a good shot of it. There's glass over the front and it's very reflective. So you can see the reflection down here of the other pieces of artwork in the galleries and but the I, reflection I, of the light bulb. But way in the background where our zigzaggy lines take us, there's a house and a tree and a farmer and some horses. And the tree and the house are even sort of slanted back zigzagging the other way isn't that funny this is yeah. called fertility fertility the next one is called march so it's the springtime right now it's march so i thought that was appropriate but look at all the zigzags in this one whoa i see so many and what when i think i see clouds in the very background it might be clouds. It also might be the reflection of the light bulbs in my in the glass in my photo. I can't tell. But we've got a little corner of a barn hidden down here. We've got back here another little farm. Move. And then so this one's called March, but this one's also called March. <laughs> There was a, a long month of March, apparently. So this is a little bit different, but we still have a zigzag back and forth in this painting. Oh, I we? see something. What? I see a, a little, like, house in the very background. Yeah. <gasps> and what's next to the house? Windmill. Oh, windmill. <gasps> Another windmill. And what? again... Yeah. These oh, trees windmill. are crazy shaped trees, but don't they kind of look like they're also trying to zigzag back up here? I always thought that was kind of cool. Wait, so those, those trees look like they're blowing in the wind. It does look like they're blowing in the wind. They are <laughs> maybe having a really blustery, windy day in March. Maybe, Heaven maybe knows we've had windy days this week. Maybe it was just before the derecho. <laughs> or maybe just after. <laughs> so if you have your art supplies out, now's no, the time to grab not. them. Take your piece of paper. Everybody has a piece of paper? Yes? OK, so. Um, I think, why doesn't Do you want white paper? Or do you want yeah. 
So the first thing is grab your pencil or pen or marker or whatever you have because you're going to draw one diagonal line. Can somebody tell me what diagonal means? Up and down. Partly up and down. It's or an <laughs> oblique line segment. Wow. Malena's been studying some very yes. complicated geom I, geometry. Wow. Yes. So the diagonal line. Type of line is horizontal and this line is vertical. Yep. And diagonal is a little bit of both, isn't it? So mm -hmm. I drew a diagonal line that's straight. Can you see it? Yeah, I see it. I had to draw it in pen so that you could hopefully see it pretty well. Mm -hmm. So that's a diagonal line that's straight. It's a straight line. And you'll notice it does not touch the corner on either side. It goes straight, but it doesn't connect to the corners. I did that on purpose because in Grant Wood's paintings that we looked at, you might have noticed that his zigzaggy lines, they never connected with a corner. They always started kind of in the middle somewhere. But if you don't want to do a straight diagonal line, you could do a wiggly diagonal line like that. But again, don't touch the corners. And you'll see why in a little bit. Now, once you draw your line, here's what you're going to do. Take your piece of paper the long way and fold it in half. Okay, we call this the hamburger way. <clears throat> so I'm going to use my wiggly line and I folded it in half. Now, if you're not sure how you're going to like this, Chaitra, especially if you don't like how we've done it so far, just try it once. And then if you don't like it, you can try it again with another piece of paper. All right. Did everybody get their piece of paper folded in half? You might notice I put my line on the inside of my, my fold. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Once you get your piece of paper folded in half, then you're going to take this front part and fold it back in half so that the edge of your paper meets your fold. Does that make sense? Can you see what I'm doing? Fold it like that. That way it meets the fold on the other side. I have to put mine down so I can fold it. Okay, there we go. You see what I did? So it was folded in half and then I folded this part to touch. Then I'm gonna flip it around and do the exact same thing. Fold the other side to touch. Except that I can't do it in midair, so I have to put it down on my desk. And my paper is really thick, so I really have to push hard. So I'm gonna end up with something that looks like a zigzag already, if I hold it sideways. But there's my line. And it's zigzaggy. So fold it all up so it's nice and tall and skinny. Does it look like that? Does it open up like an accordion? Okay, that means you did it right. So flatten it out again. This is where you grab your scissors because you're gonna cut along that diagonal line that you drew. So it might be a straight line. It might be a wiggly line. And heaven knows you're going to be able to do this again if you don't like it once you've done it. So I have a wiggly one. Can you see mine? It should look something like this if you have a wiggly line. If yours is a straight diagonal line, it'll look straighter than this.
Do we have some, some cutting happening? Yes, we do. I see lots of cutting happening. And Ms. Chaitra's doing some, some cutting with some assistance. Especially if you're using cardstock like I did. Sometimes it's tricky to cut through that thick paper. Daddy and Josh are still working. Are you guys using cardstock too? Yeah? It's harder to cut, isn't it? Ugh. You do what you can for the sake of art. Josh is so fast. Okay, so once everybody is done, you should have something like this that also kind of zigzag folds. Does yours do that? Okay, now fold it up. Now, I don't know, there's a glare on my screen. Can you see how there's the short part in the front of mine? Does yours look like that where there's a short part and then a taller and taller and tallest? Yes. Does yours look like that? Good, because the short part in the front is gonna be our foreground oh, and the God. tallest part is gonna be our background. Oh. Now, think about what kind of landscape you wanna draw. So what? I did an example and I'm gonna show it to you guys so that you can see how I did it. Oh. Don't start drawing yet. Don't start drawing yet. I want you to think about what you wanna put on yours before you start. Mine looks like this. Mine is kind of a house and some trees and mountains and clouds and a sun, but you can do whatever you want. So how I did this is I folded it up and I kept it folded like this so that I could draw on it. But let's see if I can show you a little bit. I'm gonna color with a marker along the edge. You don't do this because it'll mess with your picture a little bit. But I just wanted to draw a little bit on the edge so you can see where it is better on the screen. So you can see, right? Come on, there we go. Right along this line where it's cut, I just pretended that wasn't there and I drew right over the top of it. So my mountain actually goes right over the cut line. Same thing with my sky. The clouds, I pushed up really close to my sun. It's along that same cut though. Can you see it now? So on the very background, I decided I wanted the sun back there. And then in front of it, I thought, I could put clouds in front of the sun and the sun could peek out behind it. And then along this line, let me point it out so you can see it better. There we go. The mountains kind of go up almost to that cut. So when I straighten it out, it doesn't really look like anything. And there's only stuff on a couple of sides. It doesn't make any sense when you straighten it out. But when you fold it up together, it makes a whole picture. So start drawing. I want you to think about what kinds of things you want on which layers of your drawing. Do you want a farm landscape like Grant Woods? Do you want buildings in a city? Do you want... Ooh, what if you did like a, what if you did like a, um, an amusement park with like roller coasters and fun stuff like that? That could be interesting. Miss Chaitra, what are you going to draw? House. A house? What yes. else, what else is going to go with your house? Tea. Ooh, I like it so far. You can put people in your house. You can put animals in your house. Think about what kinds of fun details you can add to yours. 
How about Addie and Josh? What are you guys going to do with yours? Um, we're going, well, I'm going to do like a castle in the background. Ooh, I like it. What else? Um, I'm going to do like lots of trees, like a forest. Oh, nice. Are you going to have maybe um, dragons or anything flying in the sky behind it? Maybe. Maybe. You haven't decided yet. There's plenty of time. As you're drawing, you can still add details as you go. Josh, what about you? What's that? I'm not sure yet. So this is one of my favorite things because when you have a blank piece of paper, sometimes it's hard to figure out what to do with it right away. If you don't have an idea immediately, you always feel like, oh, I gotta think of something fast. Just start, just start doodling. You might get an idea as you're doodling, you might not. But if you start doodling, something might come to mind. If you start doodling and nothing happens, then at least you got some doodles. And if you don't like your doodles when you're done, you can just start over with another piece of paper. How about Ms. Malena? What do you got going on? Something so that Grant Wood did. <gasps> Look Ooh. at my trees. Look at your trees. <laughs> Back up a little bit. It's gonna there's see oh. that little thing that's behind the trees. That is that it's, maybe a hidden windmill? I will share. Yes, it's a windmill. I love it. I love it. You're inspired <laughs> by Grant Wood. Yes, I am. And you know what? It turned out perfect. Because look, here's my fold, and then there's my windmill. So my very nice. Oh, this is pointing right to my windmill. I love it. That was awesome. I didn't even think of that. Oh my goodness! And now you still have plenty of space in the foreground, that shortest yeah. part in the front, to add some more fun things. What could you add in there? I need a picture of a house. Hmm. A house. How about if you draw a picture of a house? Yeah. I want to try to make. It can be a real looking house or it can be a super crazy like Dr. Seuss house. Yeah. You're right, Dr. Seuss. Oh boy. That's what I'm going to draw. Oh boy, I love it. <laughs> I love it. How's Miss Chetra doing? <gasps> what is going on over there? You have so much stuff in your picture already. Oh, hang on, you're muted. Can you unmute so you so we can hear you? There we go. House these boss. Ooh, I like it so far. Are you gonna keep it with black and white or are you gonna add some color to it? Colors. Ooh, that'll be fun. Ooh, you got all kinds of colors ready to go. I like it. How about Miss Emily and Miss Marta, our librarians? Are you guys doing anything? I'm enjoying watching everyone else draw theirs. <laughs> I'm trying to draw a llama. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! There's I want like to see Miss Marta's llama. Oh, it's not very good right now. I'll show you at the end. <laughs> Man. I, I don't depend. think anybody cares if it's good. I, I think they just like llamas, that they want to see your llama. That's very true. I, it depends on Miss Laura to represent. Right now, that's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> it's not very good. I'll work on it. I'll add some color. <laughs> It'll be good. And good. That's what I'm working on right now. <laughs> One of my favorite things, though, is like when you read a picture book from the library, how sometimes they don't look realistic. They look super goofy. That's one of my favorite things about children's books when they get super goofy pictures. I love Dr. Seuss for that, but um, think how crazy like Pete the cat looks. He doesn't look like a real cat. 
you wait and speak, okay? All right, so I'm just adding a little bit of color so that you can see what I've been doing. I will see here. There we go. So I'm starting to add some color to mine. And the cool thing is because only little parts of each of those layers shows, you don't have to color the whole page. Like if I want to color my whole sky blue, I only have to do that much of it. Because that's all that shows. Okay, I can do color. And like I said, if you don't like what you come up with for this picture, you can always try again with another piece of paper because I don't know if you noticed, but when you cut your piece of paper apart, you wound up with two pieces and both of them have a really nice diagonal line. Look at, Look at mine. Ooh. Do you Let's see all see. those ends in the sky? Hold on, I'm gonna spotlight you so everybody can see you. <gasps> Whoa! You know what those ends are? Um, They're birds. Birds? Awesome! I I've seen that in some books that instead of just drawing really big birds, mm -hmm. then then they just then the artist just draw little like in the art. No, no, me. no flying me. M's. The flying M's that turn into birds. And me. Yeah. They, they look a lot. <laughs> they look a lot like birds. So sometimes instead of taking all that effort to draw little birds in the sky, they just draw M's. Yep. I love a good shortcut like that. Oh, and I know that birds try to fly in a V shape. They do. Did you know that the birds that when they're flying in a V formation like that, did you know that they take turns being the leader? Yes, I do. Isn't that cool? Yeah, it is. I cool. think that's amazing oh, because the yeah, one in the front gets tired so fast. They have to take yeah. turns. And so maybe the one in the very back corner gets to take the lead. Yep. Because they kind of get to rest when they're in the back since they're not working as hard. Yeah. So they have, well, they only they have, have their shift. They I think that's really cool. They only have to a little bit. Yep. I love it. Anybody else want to show oh, us? Oh, and oh, look at this. Does this look like a a funky house. It looks like a super funky house. In fact, <laughs> I love the funky roof line that makes it look a little bit like cake. Like a cupcake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and speaking of cake, I'm really good at frosting cake, so I bet I could probably make a oh, cake look like that. Oh my goodness. Can you <laughs> imagine what that would look like if you made, instead of a landscape, you could do a layered cake? In oh, this kind I of shape. A cakescape. A cakescape. I love it. That's genius. You should do that. How about Miss Chaitra? Do you want to show us how, how your picture's coming along? What does that look like? Oh, can you hold it up a little bit higher? Oh, ooh, I like it. Now that you've added color, you've got all sorts of things happening. Mommy, Daddy. Mommy, Daddy. Uh-huh. And Chaitra. And Chaitra. Oh, I like it very much. And since you have your piece of paper already cut out, the other part that you cut off, you can turn that into another picture if you want. Okay. Oh, somebody's ahead of me. You've already started. I like it. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Keep working on it. I bet you could even add more color if you wanted to. Otherwise, you can just go crazy and add some really, really goofy things. 
How about Addie and Josh? Do you want to show us your progress? Sure. Okay. Oh my gosh. Oh, there's a rainbow. I love it. <laughs> oh my goodness. I can't wait to see this when it's all colored in. Thank you. I love the, the trail. Is it like a road or is it just a path that goes up to the castle? It's a little path. Oh, I like it so much. You added a zigzag within a zigzag and that's amazing. <laughs> Josh, did you think of anything yet? Or are you still doodling? Mm, working on something. Do you want to show it? <laughs> Sometimes you don't want to show anything anybody what you're working on until it's done. You want to wait? Okay. okay. We only have a, a couple more minutes until we have to close up the class for today. So if you keep working on your pictures and finish later on and you want to send us a picture, send it to the museum or you can share it with us on social media and we'll share it with everybody too. I think we'd love see to that, see it. See that little gray thing? Oh, wait, Miss Melana, hold on. Hold on, hold on. I'm going to make it bigger so everyone can see you. Pull back away from the camera just a little bit. See that little gray spot? Yes. What does that look like? Um, I have a guess. What's your guess? Is it inspired by the hidden critters in our storybook? Yes, it's a cat. It's a cat. Yeah. I like it. There was also a hidden kitty cat in that one Grant Wood painting of the house. Over yeah. mantle decoration. Perfect. You know what would be really kind of funny is if, what? you know, we had one farmer and two dogs and, you know, all the animals and stuff that we yeah. counted in our book. If you tried to hide different numbers of animals in different parts of your picture. Oh, so that could be one cat. And then I'll do two ducks. And how many are these? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight so birds. Eight birds. That's done already. Awesome. One cat. Done. Two you can ducks. do so many fun things. I like the ducks idea. What about the hidden mouse in our picture in the book? Oh, you yeah. Could add, mouse. You could totally do a hidden mouse. And you have one windmill now, but you could always add another windmill. Grant's um, young corn high. picture had two hidden windmills. I'm really getting inspired by Grant Wood's paintings. He is very inspirational. I really enjoy looking at his artwork because it always gives me ideas for lots of different things. Me too. <laughs> Whenever we do... When, I think whenever we talk about Grant Wood, when, I, when you show us some of his paintings, I always just always, it always, I always kind of just add something that's in there or something that at least a little bit funny. Gives you a little into, spark of inspiration. Into the painting. I always get like a bit of inspiration from, from the story or the or what you're showing us good that's the whole idea that's why we do these classes and that's why I like to show you the artwork that we have like oh, Grant Woods works now if you are planning to join us next month um I believe our doodle bugs for next month is about lilies of the alley so if you have the chance to join us next time you will get to use all sorts of like recycled stuff from your house, um, all kinds of weird, anything you can find, you can turn it into artwork. So that one will be really fun. Josh, were you ready to show your, your finished, well, in process artwork? Oh, Ooh, really pretty. Ooh, we're liking this a lot. 
Into nice tall trees. I love how vertical your design is. It's very straight up and down. It's very skinny. That's kind of funny because the whole thing all together is also vertical and tall and skinny. Okay, let's put these things away. I really like it. The big uh, smokestack coming out of the chimney is a nice touch too because it goes right along the line of the trees. Very cool. Are you using watercolor paints to do yours? Uh, no. No, yeah. No, no, no. I want it. Okay. What are you using on yours, Josh? Colored pencil. That is colored pencil? Oh my goodness, it looks like paint. That's super cool. Are they watercolor pencils? Oh, no, they're just regular. Um, just regular colored I pencils. Mean, for real, it looks like paint. It looks like you painted yours. That's super cool. Awesome. Thank you for sharing with us. I know that you were trying to figure out what to do with yours, so I'm glad that you shared. All right. Malena, you got one more thing you're showing us. Ooh. Oh, I'm you're muted. Hang on. There we go. I have trees. Oh, nice. And you're adding <laughs> and your color. I still think now. that wonky roof thing looks super <laughs> funny. <laughs> I think it's awesome. I'm a big fan of wonky. It's like it's like <laughs> All right. So thank you everyone for joining us today. I'm going to say goodbye for now. But like I said, if you want to share your artwork with us on social media later, find us on Facebook or Instagram or whatever, or you can always send it to me. If you look at our website, you can get my email address. <gasps> Marta. Oh, hold on. We got to show everybody Marta's lava. Yay. <laughs> It's yeah. amazing. <laughs> it looks good. Oh man. <laughs> I love it so much and I it's oh my goodness. <laughs> I love it more than I can even tell you. It is amazing. Thank you. It's all yours. Next time I see you, you will you will be the proud owner Yay. of the <laughs> mama. <laughs> I do have I have a new piece of artwork to add to my collection. Thank you. <laughs> oh goodness. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Yeah, we'll but one we'll second, ma'am. Uh, one second, <laughs> ma'am. Quick question. Uh, can I know the meeting ID and passcode so that I can join next month? Yes, it will be on our website. And I promise next month it won't be messed up. So it'll work the okay. first time. So where I can find in website? It's okay. So under events okay. on our website, it's www.crma.org. Mm -hmm. And then under the events calendar, they're listed by date. So the next okay. one will be the final Friday in April. And mm -hmm. I cannot remember the date off the top of my head. Hold on one second. I can find it. Yeah. Um, one second. It's always the last day, the last Friday of each month. So it will be April 30th. Mm -hmm. So if you look at our website, you'll find it under April 30th and it'll give you all of the information to, to log in. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank cool. you. Thank you. I'm glad you asked. I'm sorry again about the technical <laughs> stuff no, it's today. First time we are joining this uh, story time. So that's the reason. Welcome. Yeah. Thank you for coming with, to Thank join you. us virtually yeah. today. Yeah. Thank you, Chaja. for doing the class. I really liked it. It was good to see you again, Malena. We'll see you next time, I'm sure. Oh. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank, you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Addie and Josh. Bye, Bye Miss Marta. Bye. Bye.